right, here we go for another video on descriptive statistics. Today we're looking at the median, but uh, if you want to see all the other videos, I've put them up on zstatistics.com. My name's Justin Zeltzer, and the way I like to present these is to kind of try to keep things intuitive, but at the same time make sure they're comprehensive so you're covering all your bases. And with each video, I like to add a little advanced topic just to try to keep the, the veterans interested with something they might not have seen. And in particular, in this video, I'll be looking at when a median might be more useful than a mean. And I'll also try to create a little bit of discussion with my challenge question. And you'll have an opportunity to answer that in the comments of this video. Okay, so here we go. Now the word median stems from the Latin medianus, which of course means the middle of one's anus. Now the official definition is the median is the middle number of a series when ordered. And yes, I did just say that, but hey, it's my video. Here's the series 10, 28, 28, 33, and 54. Now as, as this series is ordered from lowest to highest, the median shall be the middle of this series, which is going to be, of course, the third number along, which is 28. Now, I use the word med, M-E-D, to signify the median. Some people use M or X with a little tilde on top of it. There's no consensus as to how to represent the median, but to calculate it, of course, we know it has to be the middle of a particular data set. Now this compares with the mean that we calculated in the first video of 30.6. So you can see that the median is actually going to be different from the mean. Now these are both measures of what they call central tendency. And if you unpack that sentence, it means the it means essentially where the data is. Where's the center of the data? And we'll see what sorts of data sets make these two measures differ when we have a look at the mean versus median section. But I'd predict at this point, you might be asking, look, it's all well and good to find the middle of a set of five numbers, but how do you find the middle of a set of numbers if there's an even number of observations? So here I've added a 59 to our series. Now, how do you find the median of this particular data set? And again, it's quite straightforward. We just look at the two middle numbers, here being 28 and 33, and we'll take an average of those two middle numbers. In other words, we kind of have to incorporate the mean a little bit in this calculation. But firstly, we find the middle two numbers. So with six observations, that would be the third and fourth numbers. And then we find the mean of those two numbers. So in this case, the mean of 28 and 33 is going to be what? 30.5, isn't it? And that will therefore be this sample's median. So you might get these two formula provided to you for when n, the number of observations, is odd and when n is even. But who really needs these formula? It makes it much more complicated trying to look at these formula. I mean, look at them. They've got n plus 1 on 2 as the index of x. This is when n is odd. And then you've got n on 2 as the index for x. Then we add to that and the other x value with n on 2 plus 1. Geez, look, I'm not so hot on these two formulas because it is very intuitive. When n is odd, you literally take the middle observation. So if there are five observations, you can plug five into this formula here and you'll get x3. And that means that the third observation will be our median. But if n is even, as we have here, we have 6. This just tells us to average out the third and fourth observation, which you knew anyway, right? It's pretty simple, but make sure, of course, that you order your series before you try to find the middle number, right? It doesn't much make sense to try to find the middle number of an unordered series. Okay, so let's have a look at some advanced topics now. Let's try to ask the question about when the mean differs from the median, which one of them is actually better? Here we go. This is a section I've entitled Mean versus Median. Now, when you have symmetric distributions, 
say, for example, distributions that look like one of these. On the left-hand side, we have something called a uniform distribution. Say, for example, if you are plotting the calendar birth date of everyone at university, you might find a fairly even spread across the entire calendar year, right? In the middle, we have what's called a bell curve, where again, it's symmetrical, but most of the data exists in the middle. And on the right here, we have something which we'll find out in the next video is actually called a bimodal distribution. But nonetheless, this looks still quite symmetric. And in each of these scenarios, we'll find that the mean is actually going to be roughly equal to the median. And I say roughly because in reality, you'll never get perfectly symmetric distributions. But if it indeed was perfectly symmetric, the mean would equal precisely the median. But what happens when you don't have a symmetric distribution? Say you have something that looks a little bit like this. We have a long tail on the right hand side here. Now, this sort of distribution is quite common for say, property prices or something like that, right? You've got a large amount of property prices around a certain value, and then you've got some extreme values up on the positive side. And you've also got this kind of strict barrier on the left hand side here. Properties can only be so cheap, right? It certainly can't be less than zero dollars. So in this case, what tends to happen is that wherever the median happens to be, the mean will be slightly higher than it, which kind of makes sense if you think about the way the mean is calculated. We're incorporating in the calculation of the mean, the actual numeric values of all of the observations. So if you have an extremely high observation, so say a property worth many, many millions of dollars, that's going to pull your mean up just by virtue of that single observation. Whereas the median tends to be a little bit more robust and doesn't budge as far. So let's see that in action. This was our original data set, 10, 28, 28, 33, and 54. Now, what happens if I take away the 54 and replace it with 540? What are our two calculations going to be? Let's have a look at the mean versus the median here. So our calculation for the mean was 127.8 in this situation, because you're going to be adding up all the observations and dividing by five. Whereas the median hasn't actually budged. The median is still 28. So the question is, which one of these two is a more reflective measure of the central tendency of this data set? And arguably, you might say the median is more appropriate. Would you really say that 127 reflects where the data's at? There are four observations that aren't anywhere near 127. And sure, our median hasn't really reflected this huge observation on the positive side, but it's still for mine represents where the majority of this data set is, the central tendency of this data set. So you'll probably find that when the data set is skewed, particularly when it's heavily skewed, the median might be more appropriate as a measure of central tendency than the mean. Hence why it's the median property price that often gets quoted. Now this is quite an open-ended challenge question. And I've asked, aside from house prices, in what other scenarios would a median be preferred? So if you've got some ideas, put a little post up in the comments of this video, and we'll see if we'll get a little discussion going on when the median is preferred over the mean. But that's it. If you'd like to see all the other videos, zstatistics.com is where they're at. And I'll see you in the next video for the mode. Adios.